In tonight's rewrite, a libertarian double feature. Rand rewrites Rand Paul, and Rand Paul rewrites Ron Paul. Rand Paul rewrote himself on drones after the Boston Marathon bombing. I've never argued against any technology being used when you have an imminent threat, an active crime going on. If someone comes out of a liquor store with a weapon and $50 in cash, I don't care if a drone kills him or a policeman kills him. Hmm, don't care, huh? Here was Rand Paul on the Senate floor last month. No American should be killed by a drone on American soil without first being charged with a crime, without first being found to be guilty by a court. So Rand Paul didn't just rewrite himself on drones. He lied about what he had previously said about drones. He was attacked online by some libertarians who realized that he wasn't just lying about his previous statements. He was violating libertarian principles. I disagree with shooting first and asking questions later, wrote one broken-hearted libertarian. I am stunned by Rand's statement, wrote another. But they shouldn't have been stunned because, as I have pointed out in this space before, inconsistency and lying are Rand Paul trademarks, as is forcing his Senate staff to lie for him. His press secretary put out a statement retracting the senator's statement about killing liquor store robbery suspects with drones. The retraction said armed drones should not be used in normal crime situations. When asked if the senator was retracting his shoot to kill fleeing liquor store robbery suspects with drones nonsense, the press secretary was forced to lie. Quote, not retracting, end quote, is what she said. Yesterday, Rand's father, Ron Paul, finally gave the world his long-awaited take on law enforcement reaction to the bombing. In an op-ed for a libertarian website entitled Liberty Was Also Attacked in Boston, Ron is a much more consistent libertarian than Rand, who is surely the slowest student of libertarianism in the Paul family. But Ron lies just as much as his son and just as blatantly and always has. The first word of Ron's op-ed piece is a lie. The first word, the first sentence is a lie. The first paragraph is a lie. Let's count the lies in Ron's first paragraph. Forced. Forced lockdown of a city. Now let's listen to the governor announcing the forced lockdown. We're asking people to shelter in place, in other words, to stay indoors with their doors locked and not to open the door for anyone other than a, a properly identified law enforcement officer. And that applies uh, here in Watertown, where we are right now, also Cambridge, Waltham, Newton, Belmont, and at this point, all of Boston. All of Boston. Did you get that? Forced? He said, we're asking people to shelter in place. That's what the governor said. He did not order anyone to do anything. Now let's listen to the guy who stepped up to the microphone right after the governor, the Boston Police Commissioner. Mayor Menino has asked me to come here and to tell you that the shelter in place uh, recommendation has been extended throughout the city of Boston. The shelter in place recommendation. So forced is lie number one. Let's look at lie number two. Tanks. Okay? There were no tanks in Boston. The Boston police don't have tanks. This is a tank. And this is the most fearsome vehicle that the Boston police used in the manhunt. It's about as scary as the armored trucks that move cash to and from your neighborhood bank. It is not a tank. Look at those tires on the police vehicle. Now look at the tires on a tank. 
See? No tires on a tank. Ron Paul knows the difference. He served honorably in our military. He knows the difference between a tank and an armored car, but for rhetorical effect, he prefers the lie to the truth on that one. Door-to-door armed searches without warrant. Police don't need warrants if property owners welcome them into their homes. Families thrown out of their homes at gunpoint to be searched without probable cause. No guns were pointed at any families. Some families vacated their homes in Cambridge as police searched homes in that area, in the, sus- in the area of the suspect's home. I was on the street in Cambridge then talking to the residents who were very glad to be out of their homes for the few hours it took the police to be sure that there were no more bombs in that area near the suspect's home, in or near the suspect's home. The street that the police was searching then was actually full of spectators and reporters watching the bomb search from what we hoped was a safe distance. None of the spectators on the street were following the recommendation to shelter in place and no police officer told them to go home because no police officer had the authority to tell anyone to go home because there was no forced lockdown. No businesses were forced to close. That is another Ron Paul lie. No businesses were forced to close. A wonderful little cafe was doing a busy lunch business on the corner of the street being searched for bombs in Cambridge. Transport shut down. Well, taxis were running most of the day and you could always drive a car anywhere you wanted but subways and buses were shut down so I will give Ron Paul that one so the first paragraph has six sentences and five lies Ron Paul repeats variations on those lies throughout the piece the shelter in place command those are his words that's what he calls it there was no command the paramilitary troops terrorizing the public. That, those are the words he used, terrorizing the public. Here is how the public reacted to being terrorized by their local police. Paramilitary police riding in tanks and pointing automatic weapons at innocent citizens. That's what Ron Paul wrote. What a vile lie. There were no tanks and there were no police pointing their weapons at innocent citizens. And you know who knows what a despicable lie that is? You know who knows how many police-hating lies Ron Paul told in his op-ed piece? Rand Paul. Rand Paul knows. When he was issuing his non-retraction retraction about supporting drone use in liquor store robberies, Rand Paul said this. Fighting terrorism and capturing terrorists must be done while preserving our constitutional protections. This was demonstrated last week in Boston. I'm sorry, libertarians, honest libertarians. You deserve better spokesmen than Ron and Rand. But until you get better libertarian advocates, you're going to have to continue to endure paranoid, lying politicians in the Paul family.